Hey, what's up? Today I'm going to show you how I make Indian masala chai. I'm going to keep it as succinct as possible, right? So that you won't get bored of this. But firstly, let me get into the spices and the ingredients which I use, right? It's going to be very short and sweet. Ginger, always. Cardamom pods. Usually I use green cardamoms because black cardamoms are really, really strong makes things very bitter but hey you can always try it out and see how it tastes like right but black cardamoms i usually use them for dishes like rice noodles and all that and it really serves the purpose green cardamoms are much more fragrant and adds that flavor to the masala chai that's what i feel but that said i've, I've tried like cardamom coffees and all that um potentially using black cardamom, so it's always worth a shot. Black pepper, just a little bit. This is very controversial because some of my Indian friends, they ask me, why do I use black pepper? Um, I just feel that it adds on to the spice. It's a very American take on chai tea latte, and I kind of like it a little bit, but just a weeny bit of it. Nutmeg, um, just a weeny bit of nutmeg, not too much of it because too much overpowers the tea a lot. Cloves. This is ground clove. I feel an equivalent of one and a half cloves would be really ideal for chai, especially if you're drunk by just one person. If it's two people who are drinking it, about two and a half cloves would be really ideal for it. And lastly, some basil. All right. So ginger, nutmeg, cloves, basil, black pepper, not sure, I'm forgetting anything. Oh, some people use cinnamon. I, um, I like cinnamon, I used to like cinnamon a lot, but I've gotten sick and tired of it, so I'm not using it right now, but hey, if you use it, go for it. Um, as far as basil is concerned, I feel that the original Tulsi leaves are much more potent than just the basil itself because tulsi leaves are really strong. The fragrance is much more richer as compared to the basil which you get in the stores in America. And as far as the proportions are concerned, generally it's going to be um, for one person, one glass of water, three quarters glass of milk, and about three teaspoons of chai leaves. And all these spices are going to be very minimal except ginger. So I've cut the ginger right now to very small bits. I usually use a little bit more ginger as compared to the other spices because I like my chai to be very gingery, spicy that way. Um, I don't have a grater right now because if I had one, I would be grating the ginger and putting it into the chai. That's much better. So the first thing which I, which I would do would be to pour the water in. Put this in, the ginger, and I crush the cardamom pods, crush it with bare hands, and then I put the seeds in together with the pods such that the essence of both the seeds as well as the pods could percolate through the water. But good nails, so I'm able to crush it. If not, just use your mug and then squash it a bit, right? So, all the other spices are going to be added very minimally. Just a very, very little bit of black pepper, not too much of it. Just like that. The same goes for basil. We don't want it to overpower the tea. We still want it to be high on ginger and a bit of clove. Finally, I'm going to heat it up. 
So we heat the spices first. For let's say 20 to 30 seconds. So obviously there are different types of tea that you could use. It's definitely going to be black tea, of course. Um, there are different brands of Indian chai um, in the likes of Wag Bakri or um, Brook Pond, the Red Label, and the list goes on. Um, and obviously there are pure black teas like 100% Assam tea or 100% Darjeeling tea or 100% Nilgiri tea which is grown in the southern part of India. So lots of different types of teas that are available and all of these make a really good masala chai. Um, but yeah, just experiment with it. I'm not sure how good a chai that, um, I mean how good a chai will Yorkshire loose leaf tea make or um, you know any of these English brands make. But hey, it's always worth a, worth a try. And so as I said, I'm going to be using three teaspoons of probably two and a half teaspoons of chai powder. One. And the other half I added based on the darkness of the chai because I want it to be a medium shade of brown. If it's too light, it means that it's too light, heavy on milk. If it's too dark, then you know I might have to add in a little bit more water or a little bit more milk and then have diluted and I end up with a higher quantity of chai in the end. So I add in a little bit lesser first. So I've got two teaspoons and I've got two and a half. Right? And I always let it boil for, let's say, about one and a half to two minutes. And meanwhile, I'll heat up the milk. So obviously you could experiment with different types of milk from whole milk, which I'm using right now to oat milk to macadamia milk, soy milk. I personally don't like soy milk at all with um, Indian chai. The rest I haven't really tried. I think oat milk might work. Um, I'm just using dairy milk right now. Using about three quarters milk for one glass of water. Feel. could always add any milk later on if I need to. It's going to wait about 30 more seconds before I pour in the milk. So, yeah, that's exactly how I make um, Indian masala chai. These are the ingredients which I use. Next, I'm just going to bring you over to the pot where the chai is being made so that you could see it. So, as you can see, this is the chai that's boiling in water with all the spices. Usually let it boil for around a couple of minutes before I added the milk. Currently I'm heating the milk to about 50 and I'll pour it in. The reason why I add milk later on is just for the chai to boil in with the spices and completely set the juices of the spices. the milk comes into the picture. That's how I like to do things but that's definitely not the gold standard. There's so many different techniques you could use. Whatever works for you works for you. You know? That's how it is. Milk, 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 milk. Add in the milk. So now the chai is about medium brown in color. It's a beautiful shade of brown. It's a beautiful shade of brown just like me. No, just kidding. Just kidding. But yeah, now the chai is going to be boiling in with the milk. And the milk is going to be foaming up in a while. 
So as you can see, the milk is forming now. It's going to be pushed up right now, just like that. And I lower the temperature down so that the tea wouldn't escape. But I usually let it form up about a couple of times and the entire process takes place within a span of let's say three minutes to five minutes. Forming up, forming up. The milk is forming up. So let it form up again. Then I lower the temperature down. So, to reiterate what, what just happened, I let the water boil in with the spices for about 30 seconds. And then after the chai powder is being, chai leaves are being added, that boils in the water for around, let's say, two minutes to two and a half minutes. And the milk is being poured after that. And the chai is boiled together with the milk for, let's say, about, I mean, I said, three to five minutes so probably this takes place about say this would take up about two and a half minutes of the entire process and I feel the chai is ready right now look at the color it's beautiful what I would do is to filter the tea out with a strainer yeah and what we get is a hot cup of masala chai and finally, we have our chai. And I'm having with cardamom cookies, some guava that's been salted up, a chai with the cardamom cookies, and some Scottish shortbread. This is my teapot filled with water and some water. So, yep, just gonna have. Some Indian masala chai for the afternoon. I really hope you liked this video and you've learned something from it. I'm pretty sure there are so many different ways in which people can make chai. Um, you may have your own techniques as well. Share it with me. I'll be happy to learn. Thank you.